you so much for the support. I love you guys. My hands are frozen. Progress daily. It's almost like my form of respect. There's two main goals of this video. One is to showcase what the people who view Thrasher, how they view YouTubers, and then two, how little it matters and how to deal with people who don't like what you do. Now Vans recently put out a video called Spinning Away and it is incredible and it features three skateboarders. One, the guy who starts the video being named Tyson Peterson. <laughs> Tyson Peterson and I go way back. In South Carolina, we both used to live there. We'd skate all the time together. We filmed together. We grew. It was amazing. And then I moved to California, and then I convinced him to move to California as well. He came out there, stayed with me. It was him, his mom, and his friend Ish Cepeda, who's also a very awesome skateboarder, and it was cool. So you can imagine how it felt to me seeing Vans in this video. It was a very proud moment. It actually got me a little teary-eyed. So I commented on the video, proud of you, Tyson. And this is something I told myself that I would avoid doing because I have done it before and the comment section on Thrasher videos sometimes are a hellstorm for YouTubers. Most people were just trolling, but some people did have some passionate words to deliver to me. The only thing I felt bad about is somebody was asking if I was being sarcastic or sincere, 100% sincere. Very proud of that mother fricker. But another person said, go away soy boy. What is the definition of soy boy? Soy boy, slang used to describe males who completely and utterly lack all necessary masculine qualities. Okay. All right. Let's go down. Okay. That's okay. That's fine. Let's go down a little bit. Let's let's see what we got. Why are you offending John? He's a good skateboarder. Okay. Better than all of you put together. Oh, skateboarding should not divide, but unite us. So shut the fart up and keep pushing. Peace. There you go. See. Then somebody else said, uh, "F off." Okay. You made me sad to be in the same lifestyle as you. Okay. Drink beer, smoke weed, listen to Black Sabbath, and wake up from your bull schnoz, zoomies, tear, corporate fudge. Okay. I'm not gonna read the rest, but basically, um, I'm not tough enough. It's like another thing. I'm not like the, I don't live the lifestyle, the beer and the weed and the being a, mm, a savage. Now this one I found interesting, but somebody basically said, oh, he's better than all of us put together. Doesn't mean I have to respect him or like him. Uh, so F you and F John. Now I like that comment because he admitted to me being better than all of the people in the comments at skateboarding. But what is that? Why are these people admitting that I'm better at skateboarding, but I don't live the skater lifestyle? That's the thing that bothers me the most about people who uh, are culture vultures, people who sort of get into scenes. Uh, they're also sideline skaters, another word for them, where they like what skateboarding seems like it is to them, so they try to dress the part and look the way, but they're not actually good at skateboarding. So instead of loving the act of going out there and practicing your craft, they just practice being people who want to be associated with it. And for me, I can never really take people seriously who get really worked up about somebody else who makes certain choices, especially somebody whose main choice, aka mine, is to just be a better skateboarder and to focus on that pretty much my entire life. I also feel like with most things, I'm not as good as anyone else around me when I started, so I don't really believe in natural talent, especially for me, so when I skated, all the skill that I've acquired by any means is all through hard work. And I'm proud of that, which makes me not care as much, but it also has to do with perception, so this ball right here, the reason it's in the background is because this thing right here survived the Twin Towers. Now the sphere made in 1971 was originally located on the plaza of the World Trade Center. It was recovered from the rubble of the World Trade Center following the September 11, 2001 attack. It was donated by the AXA Nordstern Art Insurance Corporation in memory of those who died on September 11, 2001. And they both stand now as a memorial for the tragic day. My 
point is perception, how little and insignificant certain things are, like the way that I skate and the way that I live my life and how it offends people. And for those people, if you're ever getting hate thrown your direction, just know that to them they have the privilege of hating on something that is so insignificant compared to much, much bigger problems. some of the tricks sketchy you take whatever you can get with this many people if you land a trick just move on to the next the whole reason I came to this area period is because apparently there's a window somewhere around here on the floor to where you can look through ground at the old New York City and I think I see it okay so this is called the portal down to old New York these are the visible remnants of colonial era New York discovered in an archaeological dig undertaken in New York every day thousands of workers in the financial district pass by without noticing what lies underfoot the the 1975 excavation uncovered some of the only physical relics of the old Dutch colony left in Manhattan, dating back to when the city only stretched a few blocks further north. Fascinating. I live for it. I love exploring the city and finding new things. I did this in California all the time, and I don't do it enough now. And speaking of soy boy, all vegan restaurant. As you can clearly see, ah, there we are. my son of a butt. That is a very famous New York spot. I've seen it in a million videos, but there's something going on with it right now. A ramp, and I don't want to mess with that. It's getting a little chilly. I really wanted to go into that museum, but apparently it's been closed for a good solid month. This looks so cool. I have no idea what it is, but I'm going there. This is insanity. I should probably focus on getting some actual work done, so I will in just a second, but towards the end of this video, I wanna answer this question. A quick Q&A, one question, one answer. Coming from Sky Lurb, basically saying he lives in a small town, but he wants to branch out, feels like he needs to go to a bigger town. What should he do? He has a good job where he is. Should he take the risk or play it safe? Now I would say, there are too many variables for me to just come to one conclusion, but this is how I think about it. It's very socially accepted to spend, uh, I don't know, 50 to 100, thousand dollars on schooling without actually knowing what you want to do is that a risk I think that is one of the biggest risks that people take all the time so what's the alternative to what you want to do right now you want to go to a bigger city how much is that actually gonna cost you to live in a bigger city for a year it's likely you pay around I'm just shooting into a high number 1500 a month I spent about three to four hundred dollars in Long Beach California in a year I'm still spending less than one-fifth one-tenth of what I'm spending in college College. and usually people who go to college don't use their degree for an actual career. It's based on something completely different. The reason I'm saying this is that a lot of people actually do understand risk because they do understand that and people who are willing to do that should be willing to do anything. I don't think I've ever done anything as risky as going to college. And in today's climate where things are becoming more automated and a lot more machines and cheaper people can do the jobs that we do, the only thing that stands out is our artistic ability. I also believe that you should have something in mind that you want to pursue and you should understand yourself. Are you the kind of person that can deal with being poor, being broke, doing what you can for food, working a side job, hustling when it, it sucks to hustle? Obviously I'm very passionate about this but I think there are so many things that is a social norm that is way riskier than things that are socially risky. And at the end of the day, why not take the chance? People always say we live one life but it goes deeper than that. It really is this small fragment of of time where we're alive on this planet. Why not do anything and everything that makes us happy and try as hard as we can to do what we think will make our lives as fulfilled as possible. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys tomorrow because I'm doing daily, daily videos. And uh, stay tuned to just everything on this channel. Thank you so much for subscribing, for liking this stuff. And if you haven't already, please hit that notification bell to make sure that you're actually notified every single time I upload a video. Guys, I will see you later. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. I'm in the video. Love you so much. Progress daily and keep going.